Hi, my name's Flossie and this is my 1999 Utility Master Ford E350 step van and I have just moved in. Do you like to come on in and have a look? This is a wet room so having a, a space to come inside if it's snowing or raining and being able to take off your wet stuff just before entering the house feels like such a luxury. Uh, step vans often come with a secondary door um, and this one has a deadlock on it so it's wonderful to have the security of locking my house off completely from the front but if something happens I can open it up get in the front and immediately drive off. I'm a free diver I love to dive in the ocean so one of the things that I really wanted to build into the van was a wetsuit drying room uh, at the moment it's pretty much a broom closet but in the future it's gonna have my wetsuits in it there's a fan at the top I'm going to paint the walls with uh, a bathroom paint and then because this wall is right behind my wood fire stove we're gonna have a vent in here so it can pull all the hot air straight through over here I put in a cubic mini wood stove which is a wonderful heat source I often cook on top of here as well and it's always been my dream to have a whole lot of copper. I just think it's such a warm, cozy, uh, beautiful thing to look at and it makes sense. So I put concrete board behind here to, as a fire barrier and heat protection um, and then wanted to cover it up by putting this beautiful copper on top. When I purchased this step van, somebody had previously converted it into a house before me uh, and I had then took everything out, but the stove was already in there. So I got a free stove when I purchased my step van, but it's beautiful. It's a propane oven, and the only thing that runs on power is the light. And I am so thrilled to have a full-size stove. I do a lot of cooking and baking and making of medicine and um, lots of things lots of cooking things so it's nice to have a much bigger stove I cook on the fireplace but cooking on a stove is just a dream definitely an upgrade I was very lucky to find very affordable butcher block countertops and we have just simply oiled them and it, they just look absolutely fabulous and I chose to oil them because I'm a clumsy person I can sand it off clean up any dents or nicks or stains and then re-oil it and it looks like good as new so the the preservation is amazing I've also got on my big countertop some vegetables and stuff that I got from my garden this morning so some rhubarb some parsley some kale sylvite or swiss chard and then on the way here I like to forage I love to find wild ingredients so I found some elderflower and some lilac and I'm going to be making elderflower cordial and maybe lilac ice cream with these two flowers which is very exciting and I've got a basket full of nettle because we're just about at the end of nettle season and I made a whole lot of nettle pesto I have one big overhead cabinet um, and we've to put lots of storage into it it's a little unfinished but I had this beautiful piece of birch ply and I really didn't want to chop it up into multiple pieces I wanted one one beautiful straight piece because in building this van and not being a professional car carpenter I did find that nothing in this van is straight nothing in this van is square but then again neither am I <laughs> I'm a little bit of a prepper so I like to have a lot of food should anything happen I have enough dry food that I could live for at least a couple of months so I have cans nuts Seeds. Underneath the counter I have two really big cupboards. At some point we're going to run the water pipes and uh, the water pump and I also have an on-demand hot water heater and I'm going to put that either underneath here or underneath the van because I really want to be able to have fresh hot water straight from the tap. And this sink was another thing that I reused from the previous van build and it's a great way of hiding last night's dirty dishes <laughs> again behind this I installed concrete board for fire safety uh, this is a faux tin tile same as the roof 
and I had a little left over so I really wanted to use it for this backsplash I think it's absolutely gorgeous it really brightens up the place I love antiques and old things so I have little collections of bits and pieces throughout the van that add character and are just gorgeous so another one like this little thing which I'm filling with tea I work online and so having a comfortable ergonomic place to work with plenty of light was really important to me and in a van often your table eating area working spaces are all your bed so to have somewhere that i can not only have guests over to come and have dinner with me i love to entertain and share food and share a drink here and there so putting a dinette in this van was incredibly important to me there's storage underneath the both of the seats and this table was actually out of my previous van and my previous van's name was mystery and this van is Siren the Step Van. And Siren the Step Van is a little bit of an ocean lover. In this cupboard, again, another thing I found at an antique store um, is both my medicine cabinet and my electrical box. So I have all my uh, personal effects but I also am able to control all of the lights from here. So we can switch on the lights in the house. All electrical is hidden. I didn't want any electrical visible as far as switches or little lights because little lights at nighttime bug the hell out of me. So having them hidden and tucked away in the cabinet, cabinet is fantastic. Rope trim is such a fantastic way of finishing off detail. The other thing that is really special about this van is it has two beds. So you have your main master bedroom, but I also have a spare bed. So during the day it doubles as a really comfy couch, but then this cubby hole here is six foot tall and goes all the way to the back of the van. So I can have a guest over and like a quarter berth in a boat, uh, you can tuck yourself up into a nook to go to sleep and you have your own bed. I built in lots of extra storage into the van so anywhere there's a nook or cranny I have a little cabinet. In future I'm going to have a vent here for my diesel heater. So I have a diesel heater. The wood fire stove kind of heats well from about waist level up so to keep the floor warm and warm the toes up before you hop out of bed the diesel heater vent will come out underneath here and keep both the garage and warm the space up. The unique thing about this bed is it has a, a pulley system. Uh, behind the octopus, I have shackles on all four corners. So if, like most vans, you park somewhere and you're not completely level, the bed can be leveled. So as soon as I get the rope, um, I'll be able to level the bed using the rope system and then block it underneath, um, which will be fantastic. I can lift it up. But the other thing is this chest of drawers is held in here by the weight of the bed. So when you lift the bed, the chest of drawers can move and then suddenly I have the whole length of the van for storage, for taking my kayak out and about. When I was looking for a mattress, I wasn't quite sure what to get so I bought a king foam mattress um, a nice firm one because I like a firm mattress and then I decided to cut it up by going to a foam shop and buying custom pieces of foam is often quite expensive so buying a king mattress made it not only cheaper but they're very easy to cut so I got a jigsaw cut it up and then two-thirds of it is here and the rest is up here. Above the bed I have a couple of bookshelves. I love to read and a few of these are also recipe books. So having some bookshelves uh, is something important to me and I love the look of old things. So I bought these from an uh, antique store again and then added this rope to hold the books in and they're just beautiful. And then this corner cabinet again is a beautiful antique and you know every house 
if it has a gnome, it's a hum. In this little cabinet over here, I have some more electrical. So I have a spot to change, charge my phone and the remote for the LED lights and the diesel heater. Building a van from scratch is such a cool experience and I really wanted to make sure it was insulated well. It gets cold and wet in BC in winter time and we had a bit of snow this year so I put rock wool in all of the walls so there's about that much rock wool and then there's a complete vapor barrier on top of that. So I sealed it as if it was a house. Um, and then we have this uh, oak flooring, which I actually turned into walls. And again, that was a reclaimed gift. And this is bamboo ply, which I have sealed and varnished. And I think it just, all of the wood colors just come together and it's so beautiful and warm. It makes me very happy to be in here. This is my garage. Uh, I have a diesel heater, which I'm in the process of piping into the front. That will keep the back and the floor area of the front really nice and warm if I don't feel like lighting the stove. Um, at the moment I have a small battery running my power system and then I'm going to be transferring my 2000 watt inverter um, from my previous van and the battery bank into here. Um, I have a generator uh, which will charge my batteries. And I also have a portable Go Solar uh, 150 watt solar panel. I am currently living in a van because it's a great way to save money. And if there's any likelihood that one day I'll be able to afford property, uh, keeping my expenses as low as possible seems really important to me. The other part of it is I'm a millennial and now we're getting pretty, like, we're getting older and I think looking at the, looking at society and the economic system, I think things are not always uh, as shiny and rosy as they think. I think we might be headed for another economic collapse and if that happens, I want to be as self-sustainable as possible. I want to be able to survive. I want to have the knowledge to be able to sustain myself, know what wild food to eat, know where to uh, go harvest things, and also to have my own garden, to be able to grow and harvest and fish for my own food. So rent is incredibly, incredibly high these days. And if you're earning any kind of money, most of your income goes towards paying rent. So this is a way of having my mobility, not being tied down anywhere. I can travel, I can adventure, I can actually really enjoy my life, but at the same time work to towards future goals and be prepared for whatever madness. I mean, we look at the last two years, it has been madness. And so you just never know what's gonna happen. And, and if you can, get up and move or get up and leave or get up and take your house with you it feels like a logical safety measure to take you only own what stuff you really need there's this uh, sense of minimalism about it um, and knowing truly that you can rely on yourself uh, knowing how to get water where to get water how to filter water how to take care and be aware of how much trash you're producing um, I burn all my paper paper waste and I recycle so much but it's a case of you can't store all of that stuff you always have to be kind of keeping it uh, and taking it to the recycling depot because vans are so small you can't let that stuff build up so it keeps you really aware of your impact I've also seen a lot of places so I'm originally from New Zealand and I've now lived in Canada for four years and I've lived in several places around the world but living in a van is really great because it's allowing me to travel around and see parts of Canada and the United States that I wouldn't have got to see otherwise. Then you get to go travel places with or without your house on your back I say I'm a turtle or a snail I like to take my house with me. Living in a van really requires you to have a very broad range of skills 
from mechanics to carpentry to electrical to plumbing to be able to know how to fully take care of yourself um, often things will go wrong especially when you build it yourself you have to be able to fix it and keep it keep it moving put it back together mechanically my last van was a 1977 so I had experience with rebuilding the entire engine um, some of the transmission um, but it was really helpful because if anything happened I knew how to troubleshoot and I knew how to figure out what was going wrong so that we could work towards fixing it. After three years in a small, well the previous van was 16 feet tip to toe, this one here is 23 feet tip to toe and 16 and a half foot inside and it is seven and a half foot wide I think. Being able to travel with friends or lovers is just something that my heart desires. When I moved to Canada, I was a bit of a, a solo, quite uh, adventurous, a little, uh, isolated. And being able to now, with the community that I've built up around me, take my friends and go camping together um, just feels really exciting. And in the old 1977 Vandura, it's very cramped. The cost of moving a giant house around like this becomes so much more negligible when you move and you stop and you stay in one place for a long time. Um, you build up community, you build up friends and being able to take those friends with you when you want to go off to visit a new island is super exciting. If I end up buying property it's likely going to be either bare land with nothing on it or in the middle of nowhere so being able to take all of my amenities with me in my house makes that dream <laughs> possibly a little bit more of a reality like who knows how long that's gonna take but this is the long goal I've learned about myself that I am capable of far more than I think I am um, from building and looking after a tiny van to building my own house again a bigger one um has been such an empowering experience um i started a youtube channel in this last year and that has just really changed uh so many of the ways that i look at things to be able to capture beauty and share it to be able to talk to other people and share knowledge and talk about foraging and homesteading and sustainability and wild food. All of those things I never thought I would have been able to do three years ago, uh, four, almost four years ago. It's been eye-opening and I'm just so grateful to have have the opportunities to have created the opportunities where I have and the connections with other people I think too often our society focuses on individualism and being a person on your own in isolation and when you live in a van you are more uh, part of community you have to rely on other people friends to help you with fixing things or building things or sharing knowledge and I think the more we can lean into building community and getting out of this patriarchal capitalistic mindset into community-based living supporting each other helping each other the more likely we're about we're gonna survive whatever's coming next I think anybody could live in a van. I think this lifestyle is not exclusive. Uh, I think, think there are so many entry points. I got into my first van, cost me $2,000, it was a really old one, and it enabled me to learn. I bought a cheap rust bucket and then I did it up and I learned mechanics because it broke down so much. Now I have a vehicle that's worth a lot and looks beautiful, but I've built up those skill sets along the way. So 
you can get into it when you have lots of money or you can get into it when you have nothing and there's an entry point for every single person and I think that's the joy of van life and it's so amazing because you get to connect with people who can share knowledge or share their YouTube videos or teach you or help you out uh, which wherever you are along your journey on along the journey the advice I would give to somebody getting into van life is to just do it I think the jump from living in sticks and bricks to living in a van is significant so if you're worried about what the future is what uh, the economic situation the political situation what's happening with all of that then be start getting prepared you can look at well, your expenses and live more economically you can start learning about wild food you can do these things before and after getting into living in a vehicle uh, and you don't necessarily have to have a big vehicle like this uh, I know people who live in hatchbacks and they love the freedom and mobility it gives them I know people who live in little old vans and they've done them up too and they look absolutely gorgeous because you get to put your personality into it um, my, my main piece of advice would be everything happens slowly and it's hard work but it's the reward is so worth it I decided to go uh, a DIY route with my both of my vans um, because I don't earn a lot of money and the amount of capital it takes to buy or credit rating I'm uh, somebody who's new in, in, in Canada I didn't have the credit rating to go out and get a loan when I first arrived um, I was still on a working visa they're not going to give you a $50,000 loan or a $150,000 loan which some RVs cost um, so buying something cheap and then earning money gradually to improve the vehicles I was living in has been a fantastic way to slowly improve my quality of life and slowly access stuff that looks beautiful um, and feels beautiful to live in um, my advice is don't put yourself into debt uh, if you can do something within your means you're going to be better off down the long run when I was younger I wasn't sure that I would be still alive. I had a pretty wild club party drug uh, youth and as a queer person also uh, sometimes just getting through the day to day is difficult so thinking of imagining yourself as an old person or an older person is something that sometimes you just don't do. You're in the moment living trying to find happiness and now that I'm middle-aged or young middle-aged um, it's kind of cool to be here and look at my life and go wow I am so different and so much more true to myself now uh, I don't have to pretend to be anyone I'm not and I get to follow my joy and make things I get to express my creativity through food and being outdoors and building this beautiful house as a younger person I was afraid of what people would think of me and living in a van part of it you, you just learn to not care <laughs> my personal philosophy on life is definitely along the lines of you live in the reality you create for yourself and now I'm older I'm living in a reality I create for myself with a goal of a reality I want to create in the future and living that life I actively pursue things that give me joy and life can be stressful sometimes 
So when you can find moments to slow down, stay a while, smell the outer flower blossoms and the lilacs, which I just harvested today, like being able to appreciate the natural beauty that's around us is, I wish you could smell it in here. It smells amazing. Uh, it smells like elderflower. But I get to park my house and look at this view, which is gorgeous. So pursuing things that bring me joy and then I get to share the joy with other people. And then the other part of it is my philosophy is how can my life make better somebody else's life? whether it be sharing knowledge, sharing resources, um, being av available and able to go to somebody to be part of community, to be supportive. There are so many ways you can impact somebody else's life and make their life better. I think once we are in our happiness and we're in a joy, we are then able to influence and help and be there for so many other people. Uh, if we're unhappy, if we're miserable, if we're in the rat race, we're tired, stressed and exhausted. We are not making the better world a better place. We are not actively creating positive change. We're not going to be looking after the environment. We're not going to be affecting the economic system in a positive way. So if you're happy, you're then able to be an activist. You're then able to go and create change. You're then able to go and connect with other people and create community uh people can follow my journey on youtube and instagram mainly youtube uh you can just follow me at flossy rocks on youtube and instagram and i have shared the entire van build series i share a lot of foraging and wild food and cooking videos and a lot of diving and underwater films um i'm looking forward to harvesting and showing you what things you can eat from the ocean as well as the forest. If you would like to be featured on different media, there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured. And if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this, we upload every single Sunday. So hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching.